Today, we are here to formally launch the seventh edition of the Africa Agriculture Trade Monitor. This is an important report that is co-published by Academia 2063 and the International Food Policy Research Institute. This is already the seventh edition of the AATM. The broad range of stakeholders represented in today's event is a reflection of the report's broad appeal and continued relevance in providing consistent data about South Africa's agricultural trade patterns, as well as into insights uh, of the vulnerabilities to shocks in global markets and the role trade can play in addressing the challenges of food insecurity, malnutrition, poverty, and climate change. Exploring the climate change and the trade in excess is the theme going to guide our deliberations today. And I'm very uh, delighted. I'm very pleased to speak to you today on this crucial and pressing topic. Today's discussions will focus on the findings and the policy implication of the 2024 Africa Agricultural Trade Monitor, ATM, a report dedicated entirely to African agricultural trades and the policies. We have an opportunity to start rethinking our trade. If we don't rethink trade in the next two to three years, we are going to be in real trouble. We need to start focusing on what we do well. Trade does provide an opportunity for us to be able to work together as a continent to focus on areas that are able to do well. Here in this room, we have the biggest brains probably in the trade environment in Africa. So we need your help because these farmers need markets and trade to work for them. This report helps us to understand the likely impact of climate change on the production and trade of different groups of food products on the continent. I have looked at the executive summary and, and conclusion of the report and have seen some key points in there. Climate change has been identified as one of the key drivers that will shape Africa's agri-food systems in the coming decades. As you may be aware, the African Union is in the process of finalizing the formulation of the post malabo Kadap Strategy and Action Plan 2026-2035. Academia 2063 was requested by the AU Commission to coordinate the work of technical working groups to undertake research and analysis on 13 thematic areas. The work of the technical working uh, groups was completed on time and has been used to shape the priorities for agri-food systems transformation in Africa for the next 10 years. Report has about six chapters, talks about several things. Africa's world trade, recent trends in carbon footprint, inter-African trade in virtual water, uh, fruits and vegetables value chains, impact of climate change on trade in Africa, and agricultural trade integration in ECOWAS. Steady growth, but you see that it's lagging um, behind many other uh, regions here, although the um, uh, value has increased nearly threefold. And here, in terms of imports, uh, Africa recorded the second fastest uh, agricultural imports growth after Asia, and the values have uh, more than quadrupled. This gives you already an idea of where, when we talk about import gaps, it's not because Africa's agriculture is stagnating, it's just that demand is growing much faster uh, than export and uh, production is growing. Latest AATM indicates that intra-African agriculture trade has already reached a new high of 17 billion US dollars, uh, finally surpassing its previous 2013 peak. The geographical position of Africa make it most exposed and vulnerable to climate change. Yet, Africa is uh, contributing very minimally to climate change. We need to make sure that we diversify uh, our import sources and make sure that we import from uh, suppliers that use uh, 
clean technologies. I fear that uh, nutrition is actually at risk. When you look at fruits and vegetables being, you know, the biggest value chains that are at, you know, high risk of, you know, water scarcity, that tells you a whole story. We must have high quality data, but also we must construct with this data uh, unbiased uh, trade indicator. And this is, I think, something which is done from the beginning at AATM. It is more and more well documented and evidence that uh, Africa's agriculture is uh, increasingly uh, threatened by climate change. And uh, to address this, uh, African nations uh, must strategically leverage their uh, comparative advantage while adapting to uh, changing environmental conditions. I think it's important to note you spoke about the processed versus unprocessed exports. Um, unprocessed fruit and vegetables can still be high value exports. So I think those are very interesting markets. I also think it's definitely an area where non-tariff measures are more important than classical trade policy instruments such as tariffs and so on. Private sector and different studies consistently reports that the ability to reliably produce to the required quality and sanitary and phytosanitary standards and to demonstrate the compliance with these standards is key for obtaining and maintaining market access for exported products. We would like to congratulate Academia 2063 and IFPRI on the publication of another edition of the AATM. Many countries seeking to improve their food self-sufficiency do so in the context of international trade. The aim is usually not to produce 100% of, the, of their food domestically, but rather to increase domestic production capacities while at the same time engaging in food imports and exports. The AFCFTA can play a significant role here if implementation is sufficiently broad and ambitious. We have to be smarter uh, using new technologies, uh, digital in particular uh, and others, uh, to bring down the uh, level of risk associated with the lack of information so that we can build more trust and feel more confident as we do business.